So, continuing to go through the carols of Christmas that we often sing, we're going to look at Silent Night this evening, and we're going to look at Matthew 2, 1 through 12. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied. For this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you who will come a ruler, who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went on ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. It says in verse 2 that we saw his star in the east. It was a silent night sky that told the Magi that a king was born. It says in the song, silent night, and yet all is bright. Even though it, nighttime means darkness, it says in the song, all is bright. A king was born. There's a star in the east that they saw. Magi, it says, Magi were pagan astrologers. They were pagan astrologers. They were not kings, as that one song says. They were experts in astrology, fortune-telling, and dream interpretation. They were very similar to what Daniel studied to be in uh, the book of Daniel. It uh, says in verse 12, even in our passage today, that they were warned in a dream. This is kind of what they were experts in. And so, if you want to talk about unexpected worshipers, these would probably be the last people that you would expect to come looking for a baby named Jesus to bow down and worship to him. But there they are. It says in verse 11 that they bowed down and worshipped him. That means that they fell on their faces before him. And it says he was a child. He may have been like one or two years old at that point. So they bowed down and worshipped. These pagans did even. And what's amazing to me about these guys, all they had to go on was an old and obscure verse from Numbers. Numbers 24, 17, and it says this. This is all they had to go on. I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star will come out of Jacob. A scepter will rise out of Israel. That's all. And looking up at the night sky, they saw something that told them that this star coming out of Jacob I was actually born now. Now, this was probably not a big fancy star. It was probably an ordinary star because Herod had to ask when it appeared. Now, people back then, you have to understand, people back then, they paid attention to the sky a lot. If there was an eclipse or if there was a comet, that was considered bad omen. You're, something bad was going to happen. And so they paid attention to those kind of things. They believed that their future rested with what went on in the sky. 
A lot of people did. And so if there was something big and significant happening up there, that everybody would have known about it. That would have just, that would have gone on Twitter and been retweeted all, all over the place because this was a big deal. Okay, so it was probably an ordinary star because Herod didn't know about it. When did this star appear? What, what's going on here? It was probably not, as it sometimes thought, a comet or a supernova. It probably didn't have a tail as big as a kite, as one song says. Herod had to figure out what was going on. And so these magi, they go to Jerusalem. There's this star that's going to rise out of Jacob. Well, let's go to Jerusalem. Let's, let's find him. That's, that's, where, that's where the king is. That's where the palace is. Let's figure this out. They go to Jerusalem. They expected his birth in the big city, but ended up in a tiny village. They thought it was going to be in Jerusalem, and it wasn't. It was in this little village just outside of Jerusalem. That verse that is quoted in our passage today is from Micah 5. And it says this, Though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from old, from ancient times. So Bethlehem was a small place, insignificant, and God was going to use that smallness to bring out a big ruler. Okay, so that's kind of what's going on here. Just to kind of put it all together here. The Magi, they heeded an old prophecy. They followed an ordinary star in a silent night sky and became unexpected worshipers in a small town. That's what's going on here. So the song Silent Night... There's some similarities here. Silent Night was uh, written by a man named Joseph Moore. He was an assistant priest in Obendorf, Austria. It's right on the border with Germany. If you go there this day, there's actually a, a Silent Night church that's there where he was serving at the time. So he was an illegitimate son of a seamstress and a mercenary. He was ordained a priest at age 23. And uh, at age 25, he was assigned to this church called St. Nicholas Church. And he had been there for just about a year when he ran into a problem. It was December 24 of 1818, and he was getting ready for the Christmas Midnight Mass, which is what they have in Catholic churches even today. He was getting ready for the service, and the organ wouldn't play. The organ was broke. It wasn't working. So this is a big service. He, was, he had planned it for months, and so he needed to get this organ to work. It says uh, that he struggled for hours. He fiddled with the keys and the stops and the pedals and whatever he did, he couldn't get it to work. So the organ was broke. So he had to figure out something. And while he was frantically thinking, he remembered a poem that he wrote a couple of years before. He had taken a winter's walk from his grandpa's house back to church, and it was just this really nice evening walk. And so he wrote a poem about the experience. And so he grabbed that, that poem. He found it, dug it up, grabbed it, and headed out. He went to the organist's house. The parish had a parish organist. His name was Franz Gruber. He was the parish organist. He was also a school teacher. He had studied violin and organ, and he did compose some tunes sometimes. So, Franz, or Franz was in his house, and he hears this knock on the door. He opens it up, and there's the priest there, Father Joseph. And uh, Joseph is kind of desperate. 
He explains to him the situation. The organ's not working. We have our Christmas midnight mass coming up. And uh, we need some sort of music of some kind. So he says, so Franz, I know that you write some music. I got this poem here. Could you compose a tune for this poem? So that we could play it by guitar. So could you compose a tune for this poem to be played by a guitar so that it would be easily learned by our choir and could you get it done in a couple hours? That's kind of a tall order. Compose a whole tune in just a couple hours and one that's going to be easy enough for a whole choir to learn it really, really fast and something that's just easily played on a guitar. But Franz Gruber said, okay. So he wrote out a tune in short order. He threw something together really fast. And they, he had the tune, and uh, the two of them got together, and they taught, they taught the tune to the choir. Uh, they taught the choir the four-part harmonies to the last two lines of each verse. And uh, the two of them sang most of the song, and the choir came in for the last two lines. So, the song was met with general approval by all, according to him. All of those in attendance, they were mostly just shipping laborers and boat builders and their families. Just kind of a small town. But that song spread. More people told about it, and then the king heard it, and then he wanted it, and then it spread to other places and beyond. Silent Night was an old poem to an unexpectedly written tune because of a silent organ for a small town church on a dark night. It was an old poem. It wasn't one that he wrote that day. He had written it years back. It was an old poem. It was an old prophecy that the Magi followed. And for us, it is the old book that reveals Christ to us. If you are on social media, you know how fast news travels. And you know what I mean when I say trending. There's things that are constantly trending and it's constantly changing. There's always new news that people are jumping on and ready to comment on. All the time. All the time. It's just, it's kind of fun to follow it actually, to say, okay, what's going on now? Who, what, are, what are people talking about now? It's kind of interesting. But the important things in life are not things that are trendy. The truth of God is eternal. It's not trending. Hebrews 13 Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Do not be carried away by all kinds of strange teachings. So the things that are most important, the things that we need to pay attention to, they are not trending, they're timeless. Those are the most important things that we need to pay attention to. Now if you want to follow what's going on in the world, that's fine. The most important things though, are the things that have always been there, the truths that are unchanging. God uses unexpected people in unexpected ways. So this silent night, that was an unexpected song by some unexpected authors and writers. And these magi... They were unexpected worshipers. Nobody would have expected some pagan astrologers to come looking for the Messiah, the Jewish Messiah. I mean, they were from a far off country. Jesus is also an unexpected Messiah. He was not the one that the Jewish people were looking for. They thought that they were going to get a military conqueror and an earthly king with an earthly kingdom that was going to overthrow Rome and all of that. It says in John 1, he was in the world 
And the world was made through him, yet the world did not recognize him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. So we didn't recognize Jesus. He was unexpected. He didn't come the way that people were looking for. And he will show up in our lives also in unexpected ways. Out of a silent organ came a beautiful song. Out of a silent night sky came the message that a king was born. God can speak in silence and be active in stillness. It's amazing to me, just looking at my own life, how God speaks to me and puts messages on my mind or in my heart without me hearing an audible voice. And it's amazing to me how God is at work even when I don't think he is at all. In fact, the moments when I sort of feel like I'm most on my own, looking back, are when God is usually the most active. And maybe that's the case for you too. But God speaks in silence and he is active in stillness. God moves in our lives in ways we don't see. And he speaks to us even if we don't hear an audible voice. He's active and he speaks. Even if it's silent and even if it's still. The Magi followed an ordinary star. It probably wasn't a spectacular star. It was an ordinary star that moved, perhaps, in a, in a different way. Silent Night was written by an organist in an ordinary small town. Jesus was an ordinary child to an ordinary woman in a small town. God uses ordinary things, to, ordinary people to do extraordinary things. This silent night, actually, for a long time, nobody actually knew where this song came from. And so there were music publishers, the first ones, they actually credited Silent Night to all these famous composers. So among them being Beethoven, Bach, and Handel. They thought that one of these great composers had written this song because it's just a great song. But no, it was written by some organist in some small town. It's so extraordinary that they thought some great person must have written it, but it wasn't anybody big and fancy. God tends to use ordinary people, ordinary people like you and me. God likes to use us. If you look back in the Bible, most of these big names in the Bible, they're ordinary people. Or they at least started that way. Abraham, Gideon, Ruth, David, the twelve apostles, Jesus himself. Pretty ordinary, regular people. It says in 2 Corinthians that we have this treasure of the gospel in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. So we are these clay jars and we are carrying a magnificent treasure of the gospel. When you are ordinary, you better reflect Christ's light. If you're ordinary and not some super awesome, amazing person, when God does extraordinary things in your life or uses you in extraordinary ways, people won't see, wow, look at how amazing you are. Look at how awesome you are. They'll be much more likely to see Christ in you. When you're ordinary, you reflect Christ much more than if you're amazing. If you're ordinary, you are in good company because you can reflect the light of Christ like the big faith giants that we read about in the Bible. And it's at nighttime 
when we can see stars. You can't see them in the day. You need the night in order to be able to see them. It's in darkness that the light shines the brightest, isn't it? Even the smallest lights, when it's dark, you can see it. When it's light out, you can't see it. In order to see the Milky Way, you have to get pretty far from city lights. And once you get far enough out, then you can see this amazing hazy band over the sky. And you can see stars that you otherwise would not see. It has to be very dark for you to see it. And on the same way, it's in our darkest moments that Christ is most evident. It's not in the lightest moments when you notice him most. It's in the darkest ones. It's when you're at the lowest. It's when you're desperate. It's when you have nothing else except your faith and you're moving forward anyways. That's when Christ is most evident in our lives. The song says, Silent night, but Son of God loves pure light. Today's Silent Night is the most recorded song in music history. More people in more countries and more languages have recorded Silent Night than any other song. Even just in English, 733 times since 1978. And the second most, Joy to the World, is about half of that. Silent Night is a major song that hits a lot of people. And it came from a small town, as did Jesus Christ, who is the most revered person in world history. Let's bow our heads and let's pray. Lord our God, Lord, you do amazing things with ordinary people. Lord, it's in darkness that you shine. And Lord, it's with ordinary people that you are reflected most. Lord, we want to be like Jesus Christ. and We want to walk in his footsteps and follow his example. But Lord, as you have shown us grace through him, help us to embrace that grace in each of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.